Welcome to day five of 100 days of VBA. Today we're going to take this set of data, so some rows and some columns of data, and select it dynamically and place it in the first empty row in our second sheet. So if I come into the developer menu and open Visual Basic, I've got a starter project here. Uh, you can see there's a couple of different things from the first few days. So first of all, we've got more Excel objects here because we've got two sheets. You can see we've got our raw data sheet and our process data sheet as we have in our Excel doc. And also in our original function, so we've still got defining our variable, we're still selecting our data, but this time instead of saying active sheet, we're specifying using worksheets and then brackets and quotes that we're selecting from the raw data sheet. And then we're putting back into the process data sheet. So if I run that function now, you can see that data has appeared in process data that was in the raw data sheet. Now, the problem with this is because we've specified the ranges exactly, if I run this again and again, it's just gonna replace the same data. Or if I add an extra row of data to our raw data sheet, say item 11, and then try and run it, then it's gonna ignore item 11 because it's outside of our range. So what we wanna do is dynamically select however many rows and columns we have in our raw data sheet. So to do that, we're gonna do the same as we did yesterday. Uh, create a data last row variable as an integer. And this time we're also gonna create a data last column variable as an integer as well. Now to make this a bit neater than we had before, we're also gonna use another new statement called with. So we're gonna say with application dot worksheets brackets quote marks raw data and then we'll say end with so now anything in this block between the with and end with the VBA knows that we're working with our raw data sheets so we don't need to write application worksheets of raw data every single time so when we're finding our last row we're going to do it the same way we did before so data last row equals and this time, instead of writing application worksheets dot cells, we can just go straight in to dot cells dot find. And we're going to search for an asterisk again. So remember, that's any character to just find the last row. We have our search order. And then remember, that's colon equals Excel by rows. And then we have our search direction colon equals Excel previous close those brackets and we want the row number. Now we do something very similar for data last column. So equals and again straight into dot cells we're still in our block working with the raw data sheet. Dot find searching for the asterisk search order. This time because we're looking for the last column we're going to use Excel by columns but then still use search direction Excel previous. And instead of selecting the row number, this time we're going to select the column number. So that's great, we've got the last row and the last column. But because they're both integers, you and I read the columns as letters, so A, B, C, D, etc. Here it's going to give us a column number. So when we're selecting our range, we need to work with numbers instead of, say, A1 to C5. So what we're going to do, we're going to say data to move, so our variable, equals dot range. Again, we can still do dot range from within the with statement, so we're still working with raw data. And we're going to open our brackets. Now, usually here we'd use quote marks and write in a range like A1 to C5, or like we did before, uh, say A1 to C ampersand data last row, because last row we know is row five. This time we're gonna do it totally differently. So we're gonna clear that. We're gonna have the bracket still. And in the brackets, we're gonna specify two cells. So a start cell and an end cell. So our start cell, we're gonna say dot cells, one comma one in brackets. And that is cell A1. So column one, row one. So if we jump into our raw data sheet, column one, row one, the top left cell. Now we want to go down to the cell that has our last data in it, so C6. So that's the third column and the sixth row. So to do that, we're going to say dot cells again, but instead of writing 
six eleven six three. What we're going to do is say data last row and data last column. There we go. So now we have our data to move selected dynamically. Now to prove this is working, I'm going to remove the old data to move. We're going to look at a different feature of VBA. So if you come down here, up here, you can see there's an option called the locals window. So we're going to open the locals window. Now in the locals window, you can see what the values of your variables are at certain points in your VBA function. So we're also going to use the step in function. So this means we can run our function line by line by line and see what all the different values are. So let's do that. So going line by line, as you can see at the start, we've got our data to move, we've got our last row and our last column, and they're all empty or zero currently. And you can see the types here. So we've got variant, integer, integer. So let's step in again. So now we're entering our width. So first we're finding our last row. And you can see now it's found row six is our last row, which is correct. And now it's going to find our last column, which is three. So that's great. And now if we step forward one more, you can see our data to remove is no longer empty. And we can click this plus and come in and have a look at it. So you can see it's got six rows and in each row there's three columns and you can see what the value of each of those things is here. So you can see one one is item six, one two is category and one three is the price and you can look at all the different rows like that. So that's great. So let's test it's actually working dynamically. So we'll hit reset for now. We'll add item 12 and say that's in category five, a whole new one and it's going to cost 99.99. So if we step into our function again, all those times until we get to the end, look at our data to move, and you can see we've added a new row with item 12, cat 5, 99.99. And if we want to say add a discount percentage, let's say let's put 10% in for the discount for our first one. Because remember, we're not just selecting rows dynamically, we're doing columns as well. So we'll reset again step in a few times until we get to the end of our width. And this time, you can see they've all got one to four values. So if we come into our first one, item six, cat three, 49.99 and 0 0.1, because 0 0.1 is 10%. So there we go, we've dynamically selected our data. Tomorrow, we'll look at dynamically putting it back in the next sheet. So we're always finding the first empty row and inserting the data there.